Hi guys, welcome back. And today what we're gonna talk about is what is a digital personal shopper? Since the last post on Sunday, a lot of people have been asking, I don't really get the concept, what exactly is it? And actually there's some people who actually wanna pay for this as a course, but we are giving it to you for free out of goodwill. Anyway, so what is a digital personal shopper? Well, the concept was introduced about uh, 10 years ago and it's really geared towards more um, the millennial personal shopper that likes to use their phone to communicate with a store and boutique for a more personal service. So like WhatsApp, WeChat, uh, Instagram just, um, DM, and Snapchat, for example, okay? So if you are using these as your communication methods with your clients, you are perhaps a candidate for digital personal shopping. But it actually takes more than just doing that in order to become a digital personal shopper. So more importantly, to find out whether you're a candidate or not for digital personal shopping, you really need to understand who that customer is that uses digital personal shoppers. So it's that person that actually takes the time to travel to Europe because they want to save money on the tax back. Because in their own countries, there's a 20 to 30% premium to buy the Dior belt, for instance, or an Hermes bag, and so on and so forth. So this is the type of person who will use a digital personal shopper and usually they come from either uh, the Middle East, Southeast Asia, or America. So if you have this kind of following, then you are a candidate for digital personal shopping. It's not to say that you can't get this kind of following, but these are the kinds of people that like to use the service because number one, they like to use what's happened, WeChat, and number two, they travel a lot to buy these kind of luxury goods and get the tax back. So now that we've identified the kind of person that uses digital personal shopping, it's time to figure out whether you actually like to do this. So if you like to shop for luxury goods, spend other people's money so that you don't have to spend yours, then this is a good um, profession for you. And if you also like to travel. So for those of you that are located in Europe, this is perfect because Europe has the best prices worldwide in order to buy uh, luxury goods, okay? And for people to get discounts from these places that I mentioned, okay? So you are the point person basically by being in Europe. And so you can collaborate with other people, and we actually have a special collaboration coming up for our graduates, um, in order to be able to provide this kind of service. So momentarily, I will tell you exactly what you need to do in order to set yourself up for digital personal shopping. So basically, you should turn your Instagram page, if it's more like an influencer page or about you, into a digital personal shopping page, or open a separate account and, you know, uh, post all these beautiful photos of luxury items like, you know, the it item, hard to find item, uh, Chanel uh, shoes or the Chanel top that had the Chanel in here was sold out or, you know, a Hermes handbag that not everyone can get their hands on or what else is a coveted item that you basically cannot get your hands on. So if you have this type of relationship with people in stores, you are definitely a candidate for digital personal shopping. Because uh, this is a word of mouth kind of service. People like to recommend you. So a lot of celebrities use digital personal shoppers if you're able to find that item that is hard to locate in a specific color and a brand, okay? So you are the kind of person that they're gonna be looking for and that you will grow your business by word of mouth. Okay, and so for those of you who are saying, oh, this business has already been done by other people in London, in Lebanon, in Australia, there's always room for more competition, okay? And you can also grow your own base just by using Instagram hashtags also. You know, so you take a picture of these awesome shoes that are totally in style. So Melon Soulier is a brand that Arabs actually really like, and they are often sold out in Saudi Arabia. So they will contact a digital personal shopper. I want these shoes in this size. No, no, no. Can you please send it to me so you will take pictures from Harrods um, of Malau Solier shoes and you will post them on your Instagram page okay it's as simple as that and then you just take payment I recommend opening a PayPal account you take the payment for the item and then you're gonna ask me how do I actually get paid for it okay so you can take a percentage of the amount so an Aramaz handbag let's say if it's 550 euros and you get the tax back, you can take this percentage as your payment. So basically it's gonna be your 11% in Paris. And for those of you who don't wanna take a percentage of sales, uh, if you just think about it, if you take 10% of 5,000 euros, this is 500 euros basically. And if you're charging only 100 euros for your hourly rate, okay, 
uh, did I say 100 euros for your hourly rate, 150, whatever, you're making more by taking a percentage. Of course, if you're selling a cheaper item, you're gonna get less. So that really just depends on what kind of clients you're gonna develop, what they're buying from you, what they want from you, and what the demand is. So you can decide how to do this, you know, according to your own style of doing personal shopping. Now, can you do this if you're located in, let's say, Colombia in South America? Yes, absolutely. As long as you have the relationships in Europe and they can send the items over to you, um, and your clients in uh, South America, then this is a viable business for you. It's something that you can add on to your service in addition to just being a regular personal shopper that you learned in our courses. So hopefully this has been helpful for you to learn how to be a digital personal shopper. Thanks. Also, as a side note, if you're planning to actually do this as a service, you need to actually have great content. So what exactly does that mean? You should have professional photos that are being posted to your Instagram account with good clarity, uh, great colors. They should be original, you know, and kind of you putting together the videos. It should be interesting so that they're going to want to buy. Okay, because that's the goal of doing this. So putting just like something like the Bottega Veneta um, website has of the actual shoes with the price isn't going to work. We've seen this actually with these digital personal shoppers in the Philippines that I mean, maybe it works for them. They have um, referrals from celebrities, so perhaps people are buying this product from them that way. But normally, this is not necessarily the best way in order to sell the product. You should actually have the product and kind of make it look interesting, put a backdrop, and you know, twist it around and make it look interesting. So something like tread styling. Also, as a side note, for those of you who are sort of incredulous about this entire business, we're gonna take tread styling which is a UK company established 10 years ago as like a Harvard Business School case study. So Tread Styling has actually secured $20 million in funding from private equity firms in order to expand their digital personal shopping business. Now Tread Styling puts uh, creative content and their own original content on their page and considers themselves an influencer and has the target demographic that we've talked about. So if you think that this type of business is not gonna necessarily work well, securing $20 million in funding is definitely an indication that it's something that could possibly work. So I definitely encourage you to open your... So for those of you who are kind of incredulous as to whether or not digital personal shopping is a viable business plan or not, we're gonna take a look at tread styling, kind of like a Harvard Business School case study because we do consider ourselves like the Ivy League of image consultant training. So tread styling opened their business in 2010. It is geared toward that millennial client, that client that we talked about already. And actually in 2018, they secured $20 million in funding in order to grow their business. Now, private equity firms don't invest this kind of money in a corporate or in a company unless they feel that they can get their investment back and make more money. So this is kind of a big deal. So this is the future of fashion. So I recommend that you incorporate this kind of business into your business as a personal shopper if it's something that works in terms of the demographics and everything. And also it can help to expand your different skill sets. It's always good to add on several different things. So if you travel a lot and you love to go shopping, digital personal shopping is so easy. Open an Instagram account, click, 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 and you're all set. Hope that was, that was helpful for you guys. Thank you. And lastly, on a personal note about image, I obviously recently just got a haircut. I also got a manicure and a pedicure and my lashes done and I feel completely revived and renewed. So for those of you who don't feel that image is important, image is actually an important part of our day-to-day -day lives. It just makes us feel so much better about ourselves if we look better, project ourselves better, are well-groomed and well-dressed at the same time. So even though we're at home, it's always good to put that little bit of detail into your own look so that you can feel good about yourself. Thanks.